Welcome back to Sous Vide Basics. My name is Guga and today we're going to be taking a look at Sous Vide Salmon, one of the best and most popular fishes in the world. Cooking it Sous Vide is absolutely perfection. Why? Because you can control that doneness exactly the way you want and that's something we're going to be covering today. So let's begin. And these are the star of the show everybody. I have five beautiful fillets. Now they were previously frozen. They were not catch fresh from Alaska. I really wish I was. I took a trip to Alaska previously and let me tell you something. Alaska is absolutely beautiful. If you've never been there, you should. With all that being said, I have five beautiful pieces. They came from my meat supplier, Emilio, shout out to you. Now the great thing about that is that you can have salmon year long. They can ship it to your house, you could freeze it, especially at these times when we're going through these things, as you guys know what I'm talking about. It is the wonderful thing about having a delivery system that can just bring wonderful food like this to your house. Now, with all that being said, the first thing I do like to do is to season them. And for that, we're gonna season them with salt and pepper, nothing else. These are wonderful fish. We don't wanna really mask the flavor of these fish. All we really want is to season them so that we can enhance the flavor and not take out the flavor. You don't want to put any rub or anything like that. Just a little bit of salt and pepper is definitely good enough. I do like to season both sides. Now here's another tip that I'm going to give you. We're going to be talking about that a little bit further in the video, which is called albumium. I did a whole video about it. And what that is, is you're gonna notice once you start cooking the fish, what happens is you actually get a little bit of white particles on your fish. And uh, those are just proteins being, uh, being cooked and coagulated, if I'm not mistaken. They don't affect anything with the flavor, but they do affect the actual appearance. But I did a whole video about it so that you guys can check it out. And if you want to minimize it, all you have to do is brine it with salt and sugar previously so that you don't get that much albumin. You're still gonna get a little bit, but not that much. With all that being said, I have already seasoned them. Check this out, everybody. Not too much, don't overdo it. This amount right here is absolutely perfect for your fish. Now the only thing left to do is to put them in the bag, and for that, just be gentle. A lot of people sometimes use some type of oil inside of the bag. You can do that if the fish is very, very dry and not very oily, but we all know that salmon is extremely oily. And that's one of the good things about it. It tastes amazing and it's healthy for you. So I chose not to add any type of oil into the bag. But with all that being said, all there's left to do is vacuum seal them and get them ready for the water bath. And there we have it everybody, completely vacuum sealed. Now I am gonna give you a tip. When you're vacuum sealing fish, just like when you're doing with hamburger, you don't wanna put your vacuum too strong because if you do, you're basically just gonna squish the fish and it won't even look like a fish. So I hope you can see it through the camera. I did not put an extremely strong vacuum. What I did do, I set my vacuum chamber to a little bit less powerful so that it wouldn't squeeze my fish. And as you can see, I still remain with the exact same size and also shape as it went into the bag. Keep that in mind. Now, it's time to cook them. Now, I'm gonna be cooking three of them at three different temperatures so that you can find out which way is the best way for you to cook it sous vide. Some people like it more like almost raw, right? If I'm gonna eat it raw, I'd rather eat it like a sushi. Okay, so I have all three circulators set at different temperatures for each one of them. I have to turn them off because of the mic, but this one is at 113 degrees Fahrenheit. This one is at 122, and then this one here is at 131. 131 is my preferred doneness, by the way. So what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna also be showing you guys how to make two different sauces that I really enjoy with salmon. So I'm gonna put three of them in here, okay? I'm gonna put one on this one here, and I'm gonna put the very last one here. 
and I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like when you have them at different doneness so that you can choose it at home whichever one is best for you. They're gonna be sitting here for a total of one hour in order to cook them all the way through. Each one of these are actually one inches thick at its thickest part. So that's the reason why I choose it to have it for one hour. With all that being said, one hour will not completely pasteurize the fish. If you really wanted to pasteurize it 100%, then you would have it to cook it at 131 degrees Fahrenheit for a total of four and a half hours. Now, if you do that, it will be kind of mushy. I've tried it and I didn't enjoy that very much. I will put a whole table of pasteurization if you really want to pasteurize your food in case anybody has some type of immune system that needs to be pasteurized. But hey, I even like it raw, right? So for me, I'm not going to pasteurize it because I don't enjoy it. All right, everybody, one hour has been up. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off all my circulators and let's take them out. As you can see, the amount of albumin over here, everybody, it's crazy, check it out. There is a whole scientific reason about it. And if you have not seen my video, which I did about albumin and how you can reduce it, you should check it out, like I mentioned before. Careful because as you know, fish is very fragile. And the last thing we want is to break them apart, having cooked to perfection. And as I mentioned, that albumin is absolutely insane on these are 131. Now what I wanna do is show you the actual texture of each one of them so that you can see which one you might prefer. So this is the one that I cook at 113 degrees Fahrenheit for a total of one hour. As you can see, the texture is extremely soft. The color is very nice and it smells wonderful. If you like your fish super soft, like if you are eating kind of like a jello texture, then this might be the one for you. It's also super juicy. And this is the one that I cooked for 122 degrees Fahrenheit for one hour. Right away, I can tell it's way firm. If you ask me what the texture feels like, it's almost the double the strength of the first one. The first one was extremely soft like jello, but this one is basically jello times two. And to me, at least for salmon, that's what it should feels like and not like jello. And this is the one at 131 degrees Fahrenheit for one hour. It is much firmer. I would say it's the traditional way that most people have it in when you ask for cooked salmon. However, the juices remains inside, so it's way juicier than if you would cook in the traditional method. Okay, now that we have them fully cooked, I am going to to put a nice beautiful sear on them because we all know that if you get a nice Maillard reaction it's always better. I'm using a little bit of avocado oil everybody I think that's the best oil to sear also grapeseed oil or any type of high smoke point oil is good. Now here's the thing you got to put enough oil to coat the pan nicely. It might look like I'm doing way too much but trust me the last thing you want is your fish to stick to the pan that would not be nice. So make sure you coat the whole pan nicely. I'm gonna set my burner to all the way high. I'm gonna wait for that oil to come up to temp so my fish doesn't stick. The worst thing you can do is your fish stick to the pan, everybody. So now put your fish carefully there and if you don't hear a sizzle, your oil was not hot enough. So check it out. There you have it. That's it, make sure it's nice and firm. Careful, there might be some splatter. If you have anything to cover it, go for it. This is something nice that you could use to cover it so that you don't get any splattering. So keep in mind that sometimes they do splatter up. So we're just gonna basically sear it one minute per side, nothing more than that. See, if you go like this and it's not coming out, it's because it's not ready. That's how you know if it's time to flip. Slowly work the edges. See, I had absolutely just released it by itself. So if it releases by itself, that's when you know it's time to flip. Carefully, very carefully, work your arm and flip it away from you. Check out that brownie. That's what we're looking for, everybody. That's that amazing taste that we all like. Now it's gonna be smoky. Make sure you open up those windows. All right, there we have it. Beautifully seared, perfect to perfection. An amazing salmon. Now that we have a beautiful sear, another thing you can do is to smoke it, everybody. And for that, I use my smoke gun. I've shown this quite a few times on the videos before. It's pretty straightforward. Just, you have a hose, and they give you some hickory chips 
or any other type of wood that you like to use. You just put a good pinch in there. Then you can use some type of dome or even like a plate to uh, put it on top. You grab the end, put it in like so, and then you just basically, nice and slow, put the fire in there. And when you do it, your smoke starts coming out now what you wanna do is you wanna leave it there for at least five minutes or until the smoke completely dies down. It is up to you how smoky you want it. I would say for me, myself, I would just leave about four to five minutes. It's good to go. Okay, after exactly five minutes, it's ready. You just remove it. Now we're ready for our wonderful sauce. We're gonna start off first with a cold sauce and then a hot sauce right after. This cold sauce doesn't get any easier than that, everybody. I just basically add a little bit of yogurt. When I say a little bit, that's probably like half a cup. Then in there, I mix, you obviously would do this in a bowl, but to make it easy for you guys to see, add some chives, okay? A little bit of dill, okay? Also, garlic powder, granulated garlic or garlic powder. This is mustard seeds. You can also use Dijon. A little bit of cucumber, diced, and I took out the seeds. Then I'm gonna zest a lemon. We all know lemon zest is amazing. <laughs> Make sure you do it you know, thoroughly because a lot of times when people zest the lemon, you can't even taste the zest because they don't put enough. They're either afraid. I'm gonna slice this lemon. Not too much, don't add too much because you'll be too acidic and add that lemon juice in there. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much the sauce. Now all you gotta do is mix it well. I wish it was in a bowl. It will make things easier but I want you guys to see. I wish you could smell it. Woo -wee. Oh Lord, check it out everybody. This is what I'm talking about. That is amazing. Oh yes. Now it's my favorite time. It's time to try it. That is my take on salmon with a cold sauce. I'm gonna make a hot sauce for you guys right now, but at least let me take one bite of this thing, yeah? Just one bite, everybody. <laughs> I can already tell you. It's so flaky, the sauce. Cheers, everybody. <laughs> it's too good. Hot sauce time. Let's do it. Okay, for our hot sauce, I'm gonna put my pan in medium-high heat around there, and I'm gonna squeeze, I mean, the whole thing, yeah? <laughs> Don't waste your lemon, all of it. So let your sauce reduce, I mean, not your sauce, your juices. We wanna let it reduce to almost, kind of like a syrup, almost nothing left. There you go. Now I'm gonna lower my heat to medium. It's kind of like a syrup. I hope it's coming through the camera. Add in heavy cream. Remember, exact amount and ingredients, always in the description down below for you. We basically just wanna reduce the heavy cream and also the lemon. It's coating my spatula nicely. Once it's nice and thick like that, you wanna add your cold butter. A good amount of cold butter, yeah? And whisk it together. Now you wanna lower your heat though. Make sure you lower the heat. There you go. And whisk that butter in so that you can emulsify everything into the sauce. Ooh, uh, how nice this sauce comes together. Check that out, everybody. You can even turn the heat at this point because the residual heat inside of the pan is enough. Oh, Lord, check that out. Oh, even if you're not using this for your salmon or anything, this will be amazing. All right, to finish it up the sauce, Throw in a little bit of parsley, mix it well. Wow. Now to finish it up, the sauce, you just wanna taste it. Make sure it tastes good. Mmm, yes. Add a little bit of black, black pepper. You can also add white pepper if you have it available. A Little bit of salt to finish it up. Mix it well and your sauce 
is done. Check that out, everybody. Wow. The consistency is fantastic. The taste is wonderful. The previous sauce is nice and refreshing and obviously fantastic as you guys saw it. But this one here, it's hot. Let me just taste it before I actually say anything, yeah? Cheers, everybody. Hmm. Very lemony, buttery. I mean, you already know all the ingredients that goes with it. It's so good. It's just too good. <laughs> it's the complete opposite from the other sauce. I'm telling you right now, this one is so good. Mm. That concludes the basics for today, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do enjoy this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe for future videos. Remember, if you are interested in anything I use, everything is always in the description down below. Let me know what you would like me to cook next for sous vide basics with Guga, and I'll make sure to make it happen. Stay safe, make both sauces, find out which one you like best because they're both winners. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.